Hey there, geographers, it's Angela. And here is our overview for this module. And it's regarding the module you're looking at right now, module four, which runs from April 24th to April 30th. This is a Monday to a Sunday module. So everything will be due on Sunday, April 30th. Now, when you come onto our site, I really work on trying to make it as easy for you to navigate as possible. If you feel that it's not, I'd really like to hear about it. So always, always let me know how I can make things easier for you. So we click on module four overview. So what are we gonna be doing this week? This week, we're learning about population and development. Many times students will say to me, wow, how do these two subjects coincide? How do they meld? How can, we, how can we talk about them in the same sentence even? Now, the more we start to learn about the patterns of population related to development, we'll understand a little bit more of hand in hand. First and foremost, it's important to see what we're gonna be learning about in this module. So we're gonna learn about where and how people are distributed. So. If you think, for example, just about our own Portland metropolitan area, how have people arranged themselves? Well, we can go to parts of, let's say, downtown Portland in the city, and we have people who have distributed themselves in very close proximity to one another, right? So the distribution is different to, to perhaps how humans have decided to arrange themselves maybe farther out in South Clackamas County, maybe Malala, and a little bit more spread out. So we find these patterns of population and distribution different all throughout the world. The next point that we need to learn about this week is why population is increasing, where it's increasing. That is a key part of population as well. Why is population increasing and where is it increasing? By 2050, a majority of the world's population will be from sub-Saharan Africa and down. That includes country like Kenya. Also includes countries like Nigeria. Next, we're going to employ an awareness of the demographic transition. What does that mean? It means that there is a correlation between getting your population under control and the economic stability of a country. So for example, China employed this in their one child policy. China currently has the world's largest population and having that world's largest population, they also wanted to make sure that they developed economically. It became economically successful. For example, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, China was considered a third world nation. Today, they are not. One of the reasons for that is because they stopped their increasing population at dramatic rates. So they were therefore able, also with a few other factors that helped, but they were able to curb their population and bring their country closer to economic stability. That is what the demographic transition tells us, is that when we start getting a population increase under control, we are able to develop a society, develop a country. What does development mean? Development means, okay, well, let's first of all figure out how we measure development. We measure development by percentage of people who live above and below the poverty line, people who are going hungry, literacy rates. So we have places like, for example, take the United States. We are considered a developed nation. We are also neighbors to a country like Mexico, considered a less developed or developing country. Mexico is still developing. They're not considered a developed nation. So now we get to learn a little bit more about how these global inequalities come into play. Where do we see these inequalities? We see them all over the world, for example. What inequalities am I talking about? 
Well, for example, countries that have a lower level of development, for example, like countries in South in Sub-Saharan Africa, usually countries who are developing and aren't developed yet have an imbalance with gender equality. For example, the nation of India, they are a developing country. They are not developed. They also have issues with gender inequality. So that's where population and development and addressing issues of inequality come hand in hand. So what are we reading about in our textbook this week? We are reading chapter 2 and chapter 9 in population and in development. And when I say read, I mean you do not need to read every single word. For example, let's think about how does Angela read? Well, I read and I go through a chapter and I read the charts, the graphs, and the maps first. And then I want you to go through and maybe look at some of the words in bold or look at my key parts of what I would like you to learn this week and focus on those. I'm not telling you that you need to read every single word for each and every chapter, going over the main themes, the themes that I dictate here in our goals for this week. This week we have two assignments. We have module four, discussion of mental maps, and I have a video there for you as well. And we have our module four reflection assignment. We have these assignments, these reflection assignments every week. You have key issues. You will never have more than four key issues in a given week. And you can answer these key issues by writing, by speaking, or by recording your answers if you would like to. Now, that is what our week looks like. I hope you're all doing well. I've enjoyed getting to meet each and every one of you through through our interactions, some of you through the Remind app, some of you through video chats, some of you through Zoom, and some of you in person. Never hesitate to reach out to me to let me know how I can make this a successful week and a successful term for you. Talk to you soon.